overcome the suffering of life. Look, last night, you know, I was at this talk I gave, and about a thousand people came, and about 500 of them stayed afterwards. And they're desperate for a discussion about responsibility, noble being, and working properly in the world to hear the idea that their lives actually matter, that if they straighten themselves up and fly right, they'll have a beneficial effect on themselves and their family and the community, and that, that the world is starving for that. Well, there's a deep idea in the West, too. It's like, pick up your damn suffering and bear it and try to be a good person so you don't make it worse. Well, that's a truth. You know, I read a lot about the terrible things that people have done to each other. You just cannot even imagine it. It's so awful. So you don't want to be someone like that. Now, do you have a reason to be? Yes. You have a lots of reasons to be. God, there's reasons to be resentful about your existence. Everyone you know is going to die. You know, you too. And there's going to be a fair bit of pain along the way. And lots of it's going to be unfair. It's like, yeah, no wonder you're resentful. It's like, act it out and see what happens. You make everything you're complaining about infinitely worse. There's this idea that hell is a bottomless pit. And that's because no matter how bad it is, some stupid son of a like you could figure out a way to make it a lot worse. So you think, well, what do you do about that? Well, you accept it. That's what life is like. It's suffering. That's what the religious people have always said. Life is suffering. Yes. Well, who wants to admit that? Well, just think about it. Well, so what do you do in the face of that suffering? Try to reduce it. Start with yourself. What good are you? Get yourself together for Christ's sake so that when your father dies, you're not whining away in a corner and you can help plan the funeral and you can stand up solidly so that people can rely on you. That's better. Don't be a damn victim. Of course you're a victim. Jesus, obviously, put yourself together. You know how to do that. You know what's wrong with you, if you'll admit it. You know there's a few things you could like polish up a little bit that you might even be able to manage in your insufficient present condition and so you might shine yourself up a little bit and then your eyes will be a little more open and then you can shine yourself up a little bit more and then maybe you could bring your family together instead of having them be the hateful spiteful neurotic infighting batch that you're like doomed to spend christmas with You know, if you have a very sick child, for example, or maybe your whole family is suffering, an idea is going to come to you. It's like, good God, who put this mess together? And is it really worth it? Is it really worth the suffering? Suicidal people, you know, they say no. They say, no, enough of this. You know, and you have to be pushed a long way, generally speaking, before you'll actually commit suicide. You have to be in very, very desperate straits. But your answer under those conditions is that being is such that it would be better if it had never been. I think it's a very, it's a terrible philosophy, I believe, because I think what happens if you act it out is that you make the very things that led you to despair far worse. And I can't see that if it's reasonable to draw a logical conclusion that suffering should justify your desire to make being end, that the answer to that can't be to produce more suffering. That just doesn't make sense. The thing is, the funny thing is, is that it, it it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel good, you know, and that might be a reflection of my general state of mind, which is very unsettled mm -hmm. at the moment because of all of everything that's happened over the last few years. But get a taste of the depth of yeah. despair that, that can be ameliorated with, with not much more than, you know, some, some words of encouragement, some, some statement that, you know, you as a human being aren't intrinsically worthless. worthless and you have a spirit worth preserving and that the things that you do in your life that you do correctly are important. It's like people are dying yeah. for lack of that. And I, I mean that, I mean that no, uh, I know, I know honestly. I, I don't know how many people have told me and these are very hard things to hear. It's been hundreds, 
of people, because I, I meet people after each of my lectures, you know, who've told me that yep. they are still alive because they watched my lectures. When people share good news about their life, people don't necessarily respond positively. You know, they don't get encouragement. And people need so little encouragement. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. And so they'll tell me something good, and I'll be, God, that's so good. You know, somebody says, oh, I'm getting along way better with my father. I haven't seen him for 10 years, and now we get along. It's like, God, great. And then the, the power of that, you can't overstate the power of that for individuals to get their life together. The individual is an unbelievably powerful force. And every single person who gets their act together a little bit has the capacity to spread that around them. It's a lovely thing to see. How do you overcome the suffering of life? Is be a better person. That's how you do it. Well, that's hard. It takes responsibility. You said to someone, you want to have a meaningful life? Everything you do matters. That's the definition of a meaningful life. But everything you do matters. So you're going to have to carry that with you. Or do you want to just forget about the whole meaning thing and then you don't have any responsibility because who the hell cares? And you can wander through life doing whatever you want, gratifying impulsive desires for how useful that's going to be. And you're stuck in meaninglessness, but you don't have any responsibility. Which one do you want? Well, ask yourself, which one are you pursuing? And you'll find very rapidly that it isn't the majority of your soul that's pursuing the whole meaning thing. But look what you have to do to do that. You have to take on the fact that life is suffering. You have to put yourself together in the face of that. Well, that's hard. Get yourself together. Transcend your suffering. See if you can be some kind of hero. Make the suffering in the world less. What the hell else do you have to do that could possibly be better than that? That could possibly justify your existence more than that? And you know perfectly well, if you have any sense at all, if you think clearly about it at all, is that that's what you want to see in everyone else. You know, it's you're, you're desperate and maybe you're cynical and now and then someone appears that acts at least momentarily like a light in the darkness and that lifts your spirit up and gives you a little bit of hope and maybe helps you continue on. It's, well, that's obviously a call to being. It's a statement from your own soul that says, well, there's something about that that's how you should be.